with the fly fishing playbook, a systematic approach to net fly fishing. I thought I'd take a little bit of time to talk about the roll cast. Um, most of you that know me know that I'm into uh, nymph fly fishing, and uh, the majority of the time you can uh, be a very effective nymph fly fisher by just using and utilizing a roll cast. Um, like everything else, I think that the roll cast is a basic block, a building block for the full cast. So if you spend time really uh, becoming an expert at the roll cast, it makes the rest of the casting very easy. Uh, basically, the way I like to hold the fly rod is I like to hold the thumb on top. I know some folks that use a fingertip on top, but I like the thumb on the top approach. I like to hold the fly rod cork, the handle, in my fingers right here with thumb on top. And then notice this angle right here. I try to keep a pretty tight angle right here between the fly rod butt and my wrist. Now, I tell folks all the time, when you cast, whether it's forehand cast, a backhand cast, or you're fighting a fish, whatever, it's, everything should be knuckled first, thumb on top in this relationship right here. Uh, some people don't like this analogy, but if you really think about it, it's, it's how you use, it's the same way as you use a fly swatter. When you use a fly swatter, you don't sweep the fly swatter like that. Basically, you come right up and you make that presentation here. Right up, right there. So I look at the fly rod as being an extension of my elbow, from my elbow on up. And basically it's just a long third class lever that I'm going to utilize to get this fly line out. Now I'm going to be moving back and forth in here as I demo some casts, but the main idea is when I roll cast, I want my hand about face high. I want to be right in here. Now you notice where my elbow is, I call that being in the slot. My elbow is tucked in the slot right here and it's nice and comfortable right in there. I can fish from here all day. When I, when I actually cast, what I'm going to do is, as you'll notice, if you watch my elbow and you watch this thumb, wherever my thumb goes, my rod tip goes. And so that's important. When you watch my elbow and my thumb, you'll see my elbow come up and then basically from here I'm just going to go down straight where I want to cast. It's this action right here, where my thumb goes, that rod tip goes. If, if my thumb does this, then the rod tip's going to do that. When the rod tip does that, I lose the effectiveness of the fly rod. I lose the load from the fly rod. You know, a lot of people, when they're casting, they'll have what's called a tailing loop when they're doing a full cast. And most people say, what's well, your wrist? But if you really watch, it's probably the angle that the fly rod tip is... is traveling. So if, if you're having a tailing loop or you're piling line and you have no power, it's probably because you're casting like this. Your fly rod tip is doing this. If you really want to shoot line and have more control, then you get the fly rod up here and the thumb comes straight down to where you want to cast. Straight down to where you want to cast at an angle like this. Alright, so I'm going to move back here a little bit and I'm going to do a few just simple roll casts. I'll probably put out about 15 feet of line. Alright, so there's about 10, 12 feet of line. Again, I'm holding it right here. Elbows in the slot, so elbow points where I want to cast. Fly rod reel is right even with my face. Fly rod tip goes down. Now watch the elbow comes up. Tip goes straight to where I want to cast. I'll do it again. Up where I want to cast. Up where I want to cast. Now what is what is loading this fly rod is I call it water loading. The pressure of the water pulling on the fly line down here is loading that fly rod, but I'm getting what's called a D loop. It's elongated because the river's pulling on me, but it's forming a D-loop. If I don't lay this fly rod back at the proper angle, I'm not going to be able to form that D-loop effectively. So think of it like this. If there's a clock here at 12 o'clock, I'm going to lay the fly rod tip to 1 o'clock. This is for right-hand casters. So 1 o'clock there, clock 12, 1 o'clock here. So it's a 1 o'clock to 1 o'clock position that forms a D-loop. And it water loads, actually loads the action of the fly rod. 
Now a normal D-loop looks like this. Watch the D-loop form behind the fly rod. Right there. Now watch the fly rod. Watch my hand, elbow, fly rod tip. This is a normal D-loop. This one now is a water-loaded D-loop. One-to-one -one position, right where I want to cast. One-to-one -one position, right where I want to cast. I always pick out something that I want to shoot at. So that's basic roll cast, and it's something you just practice and practice and practice until you get it to the point where you're very comfortable with it. Now, if you watched my um, film last week on uh, longline nymphing, uh, and you can look it up on YouTube if you haven't already seen it, uh, you'll see where I throw in a specialty cast. I throw in a reach cast. In a reach cast, what you're doing is you're putting a mend into the cast while it's in air. So in those certain situations where you need to put a mend in very quickly, um, as opposed to casting then trying to mending, trying to mend, this works very well. Basically, all it is is here to here. If I want to mend upstream, it's here to here. If I want to mend downstream, it's here to here. And and you'll notice, and I hope the camera picks it up, you'll notice that it puts an automatic bow in the line. Here to here. The bow is already in place. I'll, I'll go right at the camera here. Here to here. Right there. And it gave me a nice sweeping bow. Here to here. So that's the reach cast. I can do that backhand. And when I cast backhand, remember, you leave with knuckle first, here to here. So I can do it that way as well. So you've got the forehand roll, the backhand roll. And notice my knuckles, whatever I do, wherever I cast, my knuckles are leading here to here. The last one I'd like to show you real quick is called the tuck cast. There's a lot of people that do a stop cast. And what the stop cast does is you stop your fly rod, your line um, automatically goes up in the air because of, of the action of the fly rod kind of bouncing and your bugs drop first. I take that a step further and I do what I call a tuck cast. So the tuck cast I cast here, I stop right about there at that angle and then I'm going to do that. Here, that. And you'll, you'll see if it's done properly that your flies and your weight will hit first. And why do I use that? If I'm on a shelf and I have fish that are sitting right on the shelf I, and I need to cast on that shelf, I hit the shelf Bugs first, boom, boom. And what it does is it breaks that surface tension of the water and gets those bugs out very quickly. So here's, here's a little tuck cast. Here, boom. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but the bugs are hitting first. Right there. I'll do it again. Bang, boom. Bugs are hitting first. Stop, tuck. Stop, tuck. Stop, tuck. The bugs hit first. You know, fly fishing is like anything else. And the beautiful thing is to just, just get out and keep enjoying the great outdoors and, and, and perfecting, you know, the craft and enjoying every minute of it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, through my blog, comment through my blog at flyfishersplaybook.wordpress.com. Um, I welcome all comments. Feel free to share this video with others uh, if you think it's worthy. And most importantly, enjoy the great outdoors and fear no water.